this is a problem on work and emptying a tank and my point is to show you there are multiple ways to set this up all on how you see the problem and let's see if they all work if they all yield the same answer so the situation is we have an upright cylindrical tank whose surface is at ground level so by upright we mean like putting a can of coke on a table uh, so uh, we're not going to worry about it being on its side, which presents some other types of problems we'll deal with in the next round. Its dimensions are radius 2 feet, height 5 feet, and it is half full of a solution with a density of 50 pounds per cubic foot. All of the solution must be pumped out to a tanker with an aperture 3 feet above the ground level. So. It's very, very important that you sketch this to see where it's going. So let's first draw that large Coke can. Looks like a cylinder. And we know that its dimensions are five feet high and a radius of two feet. It's right at the ground level, so here's my brass. And I've got to pump this to a tanker that is um, or has a loading point three feet above the ground. The, the tank is half full, so I'm going to visualize that, and you can draw that if you want, but really, really critical is the placement of a slice or a slab of solution. Because that's what i got to lift. It's continuous lifting, therefore integration. It's not a chunk, a bucket, full, a cup full, a gallon full at a time. It's continuous pumping from this container. So I need to find the volume of this slab, which is going to be that of a cylinder. So it's going to be pi r squared h, where we have a radius of two feet. And if we have a slice or a slab, we know that its thickness is very small. And I'm going to use X. Hope that doesn't bother anybody who's thinking Y should always be the vertical. And I just like X because we don't know what it is. So we're just going to say DX. And this is going to be squared. So we're going to feet squared. And then this distance is also going to be in feet. So we're going to end up with the volume in cubic feet, just like we, we anticipate or just like makes sense. But we know that work is force through a distance. And so we're going to have to define where we see the distance to be lifted. And the force that we're talking about is going to be that needed to counteract the weight of the slice or slab. So let's take the volume and go one step further to get its weight and we'll do that by multiplying by density. So we're going to say the force is necessary to counteract the weight, and the weight is going to be 50 pounds per cubic foot times pi times 4 times dx feet cubed. So nicely, the cubic feet slash reduce, and we're left with a necessary force of 4 times 50, 200 pi dx pounds. And we're going to move that through um, the necessary distance. So I'm looking at setup one over here. Come with me. where I'm, I'm looking at x as simply the distance from the slicer slab up to the tanker opening. So I'm defining my x to be distance, and you can call it up, you can call it down. I'm going to go with positive x's no matter what. That's what i got to move my solution through. And um, I have to pick up some pieces I had before. So let's see, we had... Um, 
a weight or a force of equal to 200 pi dx pounds. So now I know my distance is going to be x, so I can multiply this times my force, and I'm going to end up with a work to get the job done. But I need to also know the bounds. What is the smallest value x can be, and what is the largest value x can be? Well, for this one, I think that we're going to see the smallest value as this three feet that's got to go out of the tank, plus if it were half full, then we'd be at 2.5. So the smallest distance we're going to go through is going to be that 3 plus the 2.5 or 5.5. If the slicer slab is at the very bottom of the tank, we're going to have to go through the entire 5 feet of height plus 3 more to get it to the tanker. So the biggest x can be is 8. So we need to see some consistency. If we're defining x as the distance from the slice out, then we have to see what are the biggest and smallest values x can have. So the this and these are in agreement. The rest of it is just grinding through and I used my calculator and got 10,603 foot pounds of work to empty this particular tank. But aha, there are more than one way to empty a tank. Stick with me as we go to method two. In method two, I'm going to look at x as the distance from the bottom of the cylindrical tank, not to be confused with the tanker, to the surface of the uppermost slice. And again, I know my force is the same, I just have to worry about my distance this time. So again, force is going to be 200 pi dx pounds, but work is the accumulation of the little increments of force through a distance. So I'm going to write 200 pi dx. Oh, that makes a room for my x stuff. So 200 pi dx is going to represent force again. But I need to have distance here. And I look at the way I've defined x. And I'm going to say that the smallest x can be is zero. We're looking at the slice right at the bottom of the tank. And the smallest x, or excuse me, that was the smallest, the largest x can be is that when it gets to, when we're looking at a slice at the very beginning that's taken from the top of the half full tank. So that means that 2.5 is the largest x I can have when I have chosen this particular setup. Okay, now my distance has to reflect this, and it's not going to be x this time, because you can see that if I lift the bottommost slab, it's going to have to go this 5 plus that 3. And if I lift the topmost slab, it's going to have to go 2.5 plus 3 which makes the setup reflect that. So I'm going to have 8 minus x here because the largest distance is going to be from the bottom of the tank down here up to the tank for opening. So that's going to be 8 feet. The smallest is going to be 2.5, no, 2.5 down to the surface of its half full plus 3. So 2.5 plus 3 
something called 5.5 meters. And this, of course, came from five, the entire tank distance for the very bottom of the slab was three to get out. All right, so knowing this, we have to write an expression here. And I wrote 8 minus x, but let's explain why. If I pick an x of 0, and I, you know, I wrangled with this for a while because I wanted to try some other things. That's, that's part of uh, problem solving. If I found something that didn't make sense when I checked out my definition of x, I have to adjust some bounds or I have to adjust the distance. Um, if I'm going from x, I know I can't adjust it. It's going to range from 0 to 2.5 feet, all the choices I have. So this is where I must take into account the x I'm using, the tiny x compared to the one we did in setup number one. If x is 0, that means we're at the bottom of the tank with our slab, and it has to go 8 feet. So this was the 3 to get out of the tank and 5 from the bottom. So if I have 0 here, then I'm moving that little slab 8 feet. If I'm at the top of the half full amount of solution in the tank, then I've got to move it 2 and a half and 3. So that's going to be 5.5. Maybe did I reflect that correctly? Yes. So let's put in 5.5 here. Excuse me. No. Let's put in 2.5 here, and we're going to get 5.5, which we know is how far the uppermost slab is going to go to get out of the tank. Two and a half here, three more. So subtracting two and a half from this gives us 5.5, which makes sense as the amount to move. And integration again is going to be trivial after you get through the setup. That's the hard part. So put some parentheses in because you're going to modify this through that parentheses. And again, I use my calculator and of course you can clean up the setup by putting your constants out front. Not that your calculator cares a whole lot, but you get the same answer which was 10,000. 603 foot pounds. So that should work. And yes, I found one more setup that's possible. Let's look at it. This time around, I'm looking at X as the distance from the top of the cylindrical tank down to the surface of the slice. So I've drawn an X here. And I'm sure right away you're saying, well, that's not going to get it out of there because I've got to go three more. But this is a measurement down to the surface level. So I hope you're thinking, well, the distance i got to go is going to be X plus three right away because how far down I gotta go to get to the surface level of the slice plus three more feet just to get out. Maybe that sets this part and we know our force is the same, the same, the same. But what are the bounds on X? What are the smallest and largest numbers it can be? Well, if it's going to reach down to the half full tank, we know that it's going to be 2.5, that's the best situation out there. The tank is half full, we're starting, that's the smallest my X is going to get. And if I'm dealing with the bottommost layer, I have got to take it all the way through the tank, whose height is 5 feet, and then this will reflect the 3 more to get out. I'm not going to reflect that in the X values because X doesn't get out of the tank until I help it. So. The largest it can be is 5. Again, reflecting the distance from the top of the cylindrical tank down to where the slice might be. The highest it can be is 2.5, meaning smallest x value. And the biggest x can be is when it's draining from the bottom of the tank and has a value of 5. And again, all of that's going to be lifted 3 more to get out. That's going to give us our work. 
and you grind that through, making sure you have parentheses and you modify through or put your constant out front. I used my calculator and again got 10,603 foot pounds. It's not to say I set up all three of these things right the first time. I had a couple of errors, but when I checked, does that make sense? I found out it didn't. So try, play, have fun. <laughs>